things I want you to know quickly about the word arise. First, arise is an instruction, a command of power. It was not an advice. It is not a discussion. Arise is an instruction. It is a command of power. Secondly, arising after that instruction arising is a decision a choice that must be made arise then arising is a decision a choice that must be made it is actually the decision to react against what has kept you down the prodigal son said i will arise that was luke chapter 15 verse 17 18 i will arise it is a decision a choice that must be made So nobody rises without a choice and nobody shines without a choice. Thirdly, arising is an action. An action that requires calculated effort. An action that requires calculated effort. It is first an instruction, then rising becomes a decision, then the decision is followed with an action. An action that requires calculated effort. From the sitting position where you are, to rise up you need effort, you just, that effort of the muscles. The Lord sent me all the way this morning. To get somebody up. Shiga baga daga laga yada yada. Lakwa seteba latafari. Eke tikeke babarata tala daga baratasi. Leke te fita kabarata satalash. Get somebody up from what? Arise from what? Number one, arise from slumber. Arise from spiritual slumber. Lethargy, indifference. Arise from slumber. Arise from lethargy. Arise from indifference. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 9. He spoke and he said, how long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? How long will you slumber? How long will you arise? Arise out of sleep. There are so many people here today and people watching via the satellite and the internet who must arise out of spiritual slumber. People who don't have a prayer life anymore. They are so busy with the work of the Lord, they don't have time for the Lord of the work. People who don't have a worship life anymore. People who don't have a fasting life anymore. People who are struggling to study the Bible. They are preaching but they study to the struggle they are preachers but they are studying to they are struggling to study the bible the only time they open the bible is when it is time to go and preach to somebody they are not studying the bible for themselves they are not studying for their own growth and i see people here today you are slumbering you are struggling with your 
prayer life, struggling with your Bible reading, struggling with fasting, struggling with worship, and you don't know what is the reason why I am here to kill that devil, to destroy that devil. Every spirit of slumbering, every spirit of lethargy, every spirit of prayerlessness, today your tenure expires. The yoke is broken. Somebody shout, I am arising. If that was the only way you came here, if that was the only reason why you came for this conference, it's enough. So you can live here as a mobile bundle of fire, volcano in motion, a tornado going somewhere to happen, a fire brand, a brand of fire, a man, a woman too dangerous for the devil to handle. Do you know there are pastors and there are ministers that the territorial principalities conspire to render you ineffective. They conspire to make, to kill your voice. You are unable to pray like you should. You are unable to study like you should. You are unable to evangelize like you should. You are unable to fast like you should. You are just slumbering and sleeping and wondering why things are not happening. I am here today to arrest by the anointing of the Holy Ghost every slumbering spirit, every sleeping spirit, every spirit of lethargy every spirit of prayerlessness there are those who don't know the last time they had a fast or they fasted meaningfully or substantially just eating and eating and eating and eating growing very big and the ministry is growing very small are you hearing what I am saying here today is the end of that devil somebody shout fire Help me shake the hands of three will say you are arising today. You are arising today. You are arising today. Arise from slumber into that old rugged Christ, cross Christianity. That old rugged fasting life old rugged prayer life old rugged worship life old rugged study of the bible where you are fresh every time they see you because you are in touch with heaven is God speaking to anybody here? take your seat in the presence of the Lord even though you are meant to arise take your face sit. rise from slumber there are days where only you did all night. You still you sat up from night and you woke up. You, you, you went to bed by 6 a.m. Today you are struggling with just one hour prayer, 30 minutes prayer. There were days, three days, no food, seven days, no food. Now you can't fast till 12 o'clock. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? You say, you say, oh, we have succeeded. We already have results. There is no need to fast. And I can tell you, whatever you did to get to where you are is what you must do to remain there. And what you must do to keep on going forward. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time. And you return back to where you came from. I was talking to a man some time ago. I said, you fasted a lot in time past. And your spiritual life has come down. And God showed him to me in the vision, in a dream in the night. And I called him and I told him, I said, this is the situation. He said, yes, it's fully confirmed. You're, you're on fire before and everything has gone down. Even though you are succeeding physically, but your spiritual life, prayer life and so on, it's not, they say, that's right. I said, why? He said, well, in those days he fasted a lot because things were so hard. But now things are very easy. I said, no, don't say so. It, this is the right time to fast now. This is the right time to pray now. What you did to get here is what you must do to remain here. And as a matter of fact, you must do it. Keep the devil at arm's length. He went home that day. He didn't sleep that night. He prayed from night till morning. And resumed his schedule as it was. Am I communicating to somebody here at all? What are you rising from? Number two. Arise from defeat. And failure defeat there are people who have been defeated in
into helplessness arise from defeat arise from defeat setback failure defeat setback failure you made a mistake that does not mean you are a mistake something went wrong that doesn't mean yourself you are wrong you made it you had a setback don't take a step back the setback is enough let the setback be a setup for a comeback don't take a step back rejoice not against me O oh my enemies because even if I fall I will rise did you hear what Micah said in Micah chapter 7 verse 8 don't rejoice against me rejoice not against me O oh my enemy when I fall I shall arise when I sit in darkness the Lord shall be a light unto me is there somebody God is speaking to here at all you tried something it didn't work you attempted this way it didn't work you prayed for the sick they refused to be healed so you, you stopped praying for the sick you, you, you did this it didn't work so you stopped doing that and God is saying to you arise arise from defeat I want to give you fresh fire and fresh oil I want you to rise from that defeat and rise from that failure I want you to confront what once conquered you because you are about to be anointed to conquer what once conquered you somebody shout the loudest amen <laughs> Sir Hillary Edmond the first man to climb the Mount Everest is that mountain 30, is it 35,000 feet above sea level and above the, the, the second to the last time he attempted he said to the Mount Everest, you conquered me all this while. But I am going to come back and you won't conquer me again. And when he returned back, he said to the Mount Everest, he said, Mount Everest, the last time I came here, you conquered me. And I know your height. And you have not grown taller than how you were before but I have been growing since I left here <laughs> hey! and I have been growing but you have not grown and I am going to climb you now and he climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed until he reached the top of the mountain and said I told you you didn't grow higher I have been growing one thing about mountains is that no matter how strong they are they don't grow higher the mountain of your father's house the mountain in your village when you are born has not become taller it is the same mountain am I communicating at all how many of you how many of you people here when you were a small boy there was a man in your family that used to be very tall until a time came, where's that? This man used to be very tall. How come he's not that tall anymore? No, the man is still tall. It is you that grew. It is you that grew. You are the one who grew. Am I communicating at all? And you came to this conference to grow. say I came to grow I came to grow I came to grow and I am returning back to dwarf the mountain to dwarf the mountain I speak to somebody here whatever has been your defeat whatever has been your failure whatever has been your setback whatever has been your mistake 
before you came here. I am anointed to announce in the name of Jesus. You are returning back to defeat that devil. You are returning back to climb that mountain. Somebody shout, yes! Shake seven hands around you, tell them that mountain is not growing, but you are growing right now. You are growing. Somebody give the Lord a louder shout of victory. Take your seat in the breath of the Lord. If all that you had in this conference is arise, it is enough. I want somebody to live here like a, wound, a wounded lion. That has drunk something that is worse than it and all. A wounded life. Wounded by all the, all the miseries and frustrations you had faced before now. All the ways in which the devil ridiculed the anointing you carried. You didn't hear what I said? All the ways in which the devil ridiculed the anointing on your life. You are going to live here and make that devil to pay for it. Where the devil made you and others to believe that God did not call you. That you are just wasting your time. That you are not anointed like others. You are going to live here with, with, with a vengeance mantle. And make the devil to pay for it. Somebody say the loudest. Amen. Number three, arise from depression, discouragement. Many people can be highly discouraged, but there is a high level of discouragement among pastors and ministers. Dis depression, discouragement, despair, despondency. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, 2 Darkness means depression. The depression covers the earth. And gross depression is covering the people. But in the midst of this depression, I am asking you, arise. That is, receive the command and rise. That is, make the decision not to be buried by the depression. That is, take calculated steps and arise. Am I communicating? How many of you know we live in a very depressive world? Highly depressive world. Not just this country, literally every country of the world in this, at this time. Very depressing. If you are to watch the news for 30 minutes, you will have enough depression. So whether it's CNN or whatever it is. Somebody, somebody did this. As a pastor, I receive things every day that make me angry with the devil permanently. Oh, pray for us, kidnap, pray for us, uh, it's cancer, pray for us. This, just permanently permanently on the phone right there are even some things I don't share with you to make your mind calm to put you in order just for you to be normal because there are some prayer points we raise that becomes a fearing point for somebody fear a fear point <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? You are going to make up your mind. It doesn't matter how dark or gloomy your country is. It doesn't matter how demonic the demons decided to become. You are not going to be sunk in the darkness. See confirmed terrorists, killers, kidnappers, returning to tell the boy what is the secret of your power. He said, can I be your friend? The killer is asking the man who couldn't be killed. Can I be your friend? Can you give me your phone number? He said, you collected our phones yesterday. Which one do you want? The other day, which phone should I give you? He said, I'm sorry. We'll return back all the phones. All I want is to show me the source of your power. 
which means that there are powers that the power of the enemy can bear. Listen, you must make up your mind that you won't be buried in the depressions of the earth. Whatever the devil has done around you and around your family, I came across something the other day. Say, don't ever allow any, anything keep you down in the house. When you see somebody, so what is this life all about? It's lying on the bed. Won't you go out? No need. The spirit of depression and the spirit of death is around the corner. No matter what happens, I heard somebody say, get up, get dressed, get out. Patients are patient and they lie on the bed. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I am anointed to announce to somebody here what is trying to keep you down. You are bigger than it. And you are coming out of it. And you are coming beyond it. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. What I'm telling you is how to, to operate as if the enemy does not exist. I am preparing for message on Saturday night. I'm praying and I'm receiving a call. So and so person that I know. So and so person that is that so and so is at the point is breathing and the breath is like this, it's like that. I prayed, did everything. Next news I hear is that there is no response yet. And I'm preparing for Sunday morning service. I'm fasting on Sunday morning. I make a call. How far? Nothing yet. Which means the person is not breathing since last night. And I have to come to church and I have to preach the message. And preach it with a brutality until the devil is aware. Because if you become concerned about everything, you end up a concern. That is what makes the madman a concern. He sees something on the road. What is this? is a distraction to the, to the insane man. It's a concern. Am I communicating at all? I like you today. Everyone seated here with the garment of depression and everybody watching via the satellite or the internet. Let's, let me say this. I heard that some people are saying that anybody who kills himself cannot go to hell. I heard that some people said that. There are agents of the devil everywhere, especially online. If a person kills a person, will he go to hell? Thou shall not kill. Did he say, thou shall not kill except yourself? Thou shall not kill anybody except if it is yourself you want to kill. Nobody decided to be alive. Nobody can decide to take his life. Nobody decided to bring himself to the earth. What you did not decide to start, you can't decide to finish. Your starting is not your decision. Your finishing cannot be your decision. Can never be your decision. It's possible to say, Lord... Take me. It's possible. And God may answer. I say, okay, come. But that yourself took poison. Was it out of love for God or love for who did you die? I 
I take authority over every spirit of depression. I take authority over every spirit of discouragement. I take authority over every spirit of suicide. In the name of Jesus, you are arrested and sent back to hell. In Jesus' name. Take your seat. The same way that a prostitute has no right to sell her body. How much did you buy the body? You can only sell what you bought. Hallelujah. And so, arise from defeat. Arise. From depression and discouragement. Despair. Despair. D-E-S-P-A-I-R Despair, maybe Number four Arise from stagnation and frustration I have stayed too long on this mountain I refuse to remain at this level anymore From stagnation and frustration I refuse to remain at this level Is there somebody here? The devil kept you on the same spot all these years and you want to stand up and move forward. Shout the loudest, amen. You are moving from where the devil kept you. Now, nobody in your family has exceeded that level, but you are saying, I shall be the first person. Shout the loudest, amen. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 The Lord our God spake unto us in Europe saying You have dwelt long enough in this mount Turn ye and take your journey That word turn ye is the same word as Arise and take your journey Move forward Arise from stagnation Anything you don't react against will remain What you don't resist will persist if there is a stagnation situation around your life and you don't want it to persist, you resist it. What you don't reject will remain. What you accommodate will multiply. So, you arise from stagnation. You arise from frustration. I can't remain at this level. I am rising. It's a command and I am rising. Five. Arise. From deprivation. Lack, scarcity. Deprivation. I'm not going to steal. And I am not going to cheat, but I am not going to be poor. It's a promise. <laughs> that is a decision. The prodigal son said, I am dying here of hunger. And I have the possibility of being a servant and have what to eat. Even though it's in, in my father's house. How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat? And I hear perish with hunger. I shall arise. And he arose. Luke 15, 17 and 18. He made the choice against poverty. I will never forget many years ago. In those, my wife and I read, read a book. We were medical doctors then. I read the book. I will read the book I give to her. She read the book and give me. It was T.L. Osborne's book. I've forgotten the title. It was a prosperity book. He said that in those days in this monastery... I think even in seminary at the time, they make, they do, they do something like, they call oath of poverty. Do you remember? Oath of poverty. Oath of poverty. That is, I vow and I swear that I will have no earthly good. That I will live the rest of my life and so on and so forth. That was the monastic life. In fact, some of the monasteries in those days, they don't even come out to live with other people. They live in monks. They live in, in um, 
in, the, in their monasteries and so on. I think there are three oaths. There is the oath of poverty. There is the oath of celibacy. Not to marry and to anything. And then I think there is a third one. Yes. T.L. Osborne said, in the same manner that you can make an oath not to have, you can, you can vow to have. I have chosen before you life and death. Choose life. Blessing and cursing. Anyone you choose, you can have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My wife and I deliberately held hands 20 how many years ago and say we vow to have. And to be channels. And to be channels. Lord, as much as you will give to us, it will pass through us and, and pass through to many people. It, we, are, we are not going to be depots. We are channels. Pass it through us. We, we vow we shall have. <laughs> So God began to release in our direction a mass. One day, you know, people give us suit, they give us all manner of things. I was wearing one suit, it was too big for me. And I was wondering what's happening. They should, they, they should uh, uh, let them know my size or something. And the Lord said, No, not everyone I bring to you is for you. You remember, you say you are a channel. He said, that there are many that, that came through you for others, not for you. I said, okay, thank you, sir, I understand. So they gave me one very massive suit. In fact, two or three of me can wear that suit. The hand is very long. Trousers, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. Extra, extra, extra large. American voluminous suit. The, 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 the top is voluminous. The, the, the trousers are voluminous. So I left it hanging there. So a man came from America, tall, hefty man, one day. And I said, follow me to the house. And he came. I said, I have a suit for you. I gave him the suit. He wore it. He swallowed the suit. He said, as if I was measured. <laughs> as if they measured me. The, the top, the pants, the trousers, all. As if I was measured. I said, it's for you. Go with it. Then I... I, I realize in a greater detail that as it's passing through, it belongs to somebody. So you can make, you can be, you can, you can vow against scarcity. That if you have chosen giving blessing and curse, and I, I have a choice, I have chosen blessing. I am not going to steal. I am not going to cheat. I am not going to lie. I am not going to be corrupt. I will do what is legally possible and I can't be poor. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? So, you are rising from deprivation. You are rising from poverty. You are rising from scarcity. You are rising from shortage. You don't do things for the sake of money anymore. Because money does not drive your actions anymore. I went to preach somewhere in Europe. And I came. I have paid my flight ticket, paid everything after I finished preaching. I returned back home. About two or three weeks later, the man of God called me and said, we, are, we haven't seen your bank account to send you our honorarium. And even flight ticket reimbursement. I said, okay. Um, I'm not aware. Okay, let me find out from the secretary. That is, if the man didn't call, I won't remember it for life. <laughs> I'm telling you my mind. I won't remember it. If he didn't call to say, um, that is, they are reminding you that they haven't given you honorarium and you forgot. It's easy to forget like that. <laughs> In fact, there are people who will not leave. Are you sending flight ticket? I want to see something in my account before I move. 
I speak to someone here. Every spell of scarcity, spell of wretchedness on your life and on your family. Today, the spell is broken. That amen can be better. Shout the loudest, amen. Lift your right and say, I arise out of scarcity, out of shortage. I vow I cannot lack. Take your seat. Arise from deprivation. Number six, arise from affliction. Walk out on that sickness like that woman. Kidney mass, query malignancy, query carcinoma, query cancer. She stepped into the car and said, that devil is a bastard. Arise from affliction like blind Bartimaeus. In Mark chapter 10, verse 49 to 50, Jesus called at you. He threw away his garment and he arose. Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. There are people who will rise out of their wheelchairs to this morning. Rise out of their crutches and rise out of blindness. That's right. I mentioned blind Bartimaeus. I take authority over every blind devil of blindness. Every spirit of short-sightedness. Every occultic blindness. Whether spiritual or physical. I cause you to die. Because the Lord showed me overnight somebody who became mysteriously blind suddenly by a witchcraft attack. I take authority over that kind of satanic arrow anywhere it came from. Ah, that's right. Arrows of envy, arrows of jealousy that wants to affect and attack your eyes. I retrieve that arrow, fired back to sender in the name of Jesus. When it is time, you arise out of affliction. Number seven, arise out of limitation and embargoes. Out of limitations and embargoes. That was where I literally started from. Where the devil placed a ceiling on your life and vowed that as long as you are in this town, nobody can cross this level. See, they said that in your country, in the where you are, there is no church bigger than 2,000, no church bigger than 3,000, no church bigger than 4,000, some no church bigger than 1,000, no church of 5,000, no church of 10,000. You will be the first person that amen is too paralyzed, that amen is not a good one. They said in your family, nobody has reached this level. Nobody has crossed a certain barrier. You shall be the first one. Maybe I should look for somebody else to talk to. They said nobody has reached a certain level in government or a certain level in authority, a certain level in influence. I prophesy, you will be the first one. The front is always very free. I was in Lagos some time ago and there was a lot of hold up. And I was wondering inside the car. All of a sudden, we moved a little and saw that a, a, a big truck had parked somehow. And once we passed there, the front was very free. The Lord told me, He said, It doesn't matter how congested where you are is now. Keep moving. The front is free. The front is always free. Most times when they say there is no seat in the aircraft, it's not that the first class is not free. Uh, and and if, in, if, if, in, if in most cases the first class is, of this aircraft is free, the first class of another aircraft will be empty. There will be seat in the first class of uh, Lufthansa or the first class of KLM or the first class of British Airways or the first class of anyone. There will always be seat in the front. There will be here or there. O -o -under, I mean, no matter what. If it's not there in this aircraft, it's there in the other aircraft. 
when they say the aircraft is full, is that the economy is filled. That is, the <laughs> she's laughing. She walked. The, 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 the economy is full, and, and you don't you don't have it, it, the, where you have money for. There is no chance. And maybe the business class also maybe is full, but there is space in front. And who told you that you cannot sit in that front? Ay, 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 ay. So, and that is why God creates space in the front. So that anybody can study. See, when Jesus wanted, was preaching in Mark chapter 2, the ground was congested. When the people carrying the paralyzed man couldn't find space, they saw that there was space up. So they broke the roof, went through the top, and came down. So if the ground is full, up is free. All the time. Hear me, beloved brothers and sisters. You must make up your mind to be an obstacle crosser. An embargo breaker in a realm, one realm or the other, you must determine to be the first in that field. If somebody saying amen, say louder, amen. amen. Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus. Say it louder in the name of Jesus. I am crossing a barrier, I am crossing an obstacle, I am going forward. I am so happy that there are many people here from different countries who saw us when we were in Area 1 and you are with us here now. A day will come where there will be a ground big enough for 5, 10 million people, if Jesus tarries, to be on their knees at once, worshipping the King of Kings. You will see it. I prophesy to somebody every limitation on your family, on your life, on your destiny is over right now. Stand up on your feet and shout out loud and say, Amen. Be up standing as I give you point number seven, right? Eight. Number eight. Arise. I use the medical word. Arise from mortification. That is the death process. Arise from the dead. Mark 5, 41. Jesus took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha, Kuma, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Verse 42. And straight away the damsel arose and walked. That was death had happened. And they still arise. Maybe your body part died, kidney died, or even life as a whole. Arise. Our people went on evangelism. They ran into a man who was being taken to the hospital, dead. They say he collapsed, breathless on their way. They began to pray, play the tongues of fire in the ear of the, of the man. <laughs> Jacked back as they stepped, about to step into the hospital. Brought him here with his wife on this altar to testify. We have seen that again here and there. Here and there. Maybe your marriage died. There is no hope anymore. Nobody will believe that anything can come out of that home. It can rise. Maybe ministry died. Maybe business closed. Yes, it has ended. Everything has ended. You can arise from the dead. 
body part died. Man who died. Young man, two Sundays ago. Impotent. Bam. Life came inside the church. Nothing is too dead for the power of God to bring back to life. Stand up on your feet. Shut up. I am not going to speak further. Any realm where you need to arise, you are speaking to yourself now. I am arising. I am rising. I have decided to rise beyond limitation, beyond poverty, beyond this affliction, beyond satanic embargoes on my family. I am arising. Satan, you can't keep me down. Listen. In Jesus' name. I see a lot of people looking for prayer here and there. No problem. But can I tell you that nobody can pray for you like yourself? Now, a place they said the closest relation you have is yourself. That is, you are more related to yourself than anybody else. <laughs> Do you know the meaning of that? You, you can, this is my relation, this is my relation, but nobody is more your relation than yourself. Summary, nobody can help you like yourself. If you have not decided for things to change for yourself, nobody can decide for you. So I want you with violence and aggressivity declare I am rising. I'm rising. It's a command. I obey the command to rise. I obey the command to rise out of poverty. I obey the command to rise out of depression. I refuse to be unhappy. I refuse to remain like that. I obey the command to rise out of sickness. Are you ready? Open your mouth and help out there. Help them. Open your mouth and pray in the spirit. <laughs>